Hey everyone, uh, so I'm back for another fun day of renovations. Today, we're gonna be laying some vinyl plank flooring. All right, so today's a big day. Uh, we're gonna be putting some flooring down in the kitchen. Uh, we just did the front room and I think it came out pretty well. It's another one of those things that, that once it's done, it just completely transforms the room. So with the two of us working, this took about a day. Uh, it's a huge room though. It's, it's about 17 by 14 or so. Thankfully though, the kitchen's a lot smaller. Uh, however, it is a little bit more complex. Um, we've got this butt out here, that butt's out, and then I'm gonna have to plank backwards going up in there because uh, I'm planning on starting from this direction. It's a little less complex starting from this way. Good news is once we get over here, uh, it's really just kind of butting it up with the appropriate gap up against the wall and we're going to cover the gap in front of the doors here. So flooring this way, I feel, is going to be just a little bit less complex. Uh, and honestly, uh, it's at that side of the room uh, over here where if I need to replace a door or, or do anything, uh, having the ability to remove a row of planks uh, or if I have water issues under there, anything like that, it just makes it a lot easier. So I'm lucky that I do have the guy helping me out uh, coming again today. Uh, so he's going to be here. I was debating whether to have him help me with the floor or, or just do some painting. Uh, and I'm opting, because it's kind of a smaller space, uh, and well, if you've been around for a while, you know how much I love painting, right? I'm gonna ask him to do the paint, because he, he says he likes it, so I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. We'll have him do some painting today. We've got all of the trim that either needs to be put back up uh, or was newly purchased to, to install, uh, all set up in here. Uh, some of it's gonna need to be primed. We actually had issues with some of this stuff. The paint was peeling off. And then we got a bunch of trim in here that either needs to be primed or painted. And the bathroom ceiling needs another coat. And, and honestly, there's, there's plenty of painting to do in here. Uh, and again, if he likes it, I'm not gonna ask him, <laughs> I'm not gonna ask him twice, honestly. I'm just gonna just take it for granted. Just, that's what he can do today. So with that, we're just gonna get started. All right, so to start us out today, let's talk a little bit about the product that we're gonna be installing. So this is a product called Corlux. Uh, it's a rigid vinyl plank. Uh, it's, it's, you can see a cut piece here. It's fairly thick. I would say that's at least, oh, I gotta go measure it. Yeah, so it's about a quarter of an inch thick, and then there's the foam backer layer on the back, uh, which is quite nice. It saves time in the install because you don't have to lay down a separate sheet. Uh, it's also extremely forgiving, which is one of the reasons I like it. So whenever I'm laying flooring, uh, usually it's in old houses, right? Just like this one. Uh, and, you know, the floors in old houses are never flat. And they're not always terrible, uh, they're just not perfect, right? You never have a perfectly flat surface. And what I find is this flooring, uh, it really tends to stay together well, even when you might have like humps or, or bends or something like that. And we're dealing with some of those in here. Uh, when we get to them, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you that. You do need to plan ahead, like you need to know where your challenge areas are and make sure that you don't have like seams right on the middle of those humps or, or, or things like that. But I've been laying this stuff down for five years and I haven't had any issues yet. Like I said, the floors aren't bad, they're just not perfect. And this is a pretty forgiving product. So this is technically classified as a rigid vinyl plank. Uh, I don't know what the difference is between rigid and luxury. It looks pretty good. Uh, this is the honey oak mead. It's got a seven mil wear layer on the top, a quarter inch core and the pad on the bottom. Bottom. I found it to be a really durable product. I get mine in the Northeast at a company called LL Flooring. Uh, they used to be called Lumber Liquidators. I think they're I think they're national, but I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I know Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, they do carry uh, comparable products. I usually go for this one because the wear layer is a little bit thicker. Uh, I like the pattern, uh, and, and it's pretty much in stock, right? They, they they stock it. They usually have like 200 or so cases in stock, so it's it's never really hard to get. The next thing I want to talk about is preparation. Uh, so you may notice here I've got feather finish. Uh, all along here where I was trying to kind of even out. I didn't really have a hump, but I had a little bit of a drop where the floor wasn't exactly even. So I feathered that out as best I could with feather finish. So you heard me say the product was pretty forgiving, right? Well, it's forgiving to kind of long gradual humps, a really pronounced one, uh, you know, within a couple inches of either side, right? That's gonna cause problems. So you always wanna make sure you take care of that. I ended up getting some plywood, putting in a couple sheets with varying thicknesses here, building it up. Uh, it was almost perfect. Along this edge here, I just had to build it up a little bit uh, and, and now it's good. Also had a similar situation here by the door. Uh, this is where pieces of that vinyl had been pulled up. Uh, hit that with a feather finish to kind of even it out. A uh, little hole over there. And here where this had originally uh, stopped, right about here, uh, what I ended up doing was putting in a couple pieces of uh, 3 8 inch plywood. And then again, I, I used some feather finish in here just to make sure that it was at the right level. So unfortunately in here, I am gonna leave this baseboard on, uh, which means I'm gonna have to do quarter round uh, in, in this area, 
and in this area over here. So if you watch me do this before, you might remember me saying I would never do that again, right? I would always take off the baseboards, I'd put the flooring underneath, uh, and then I'd reapply the baseboards. Here's the thing about the way these are installed. So I think these baseboards are actually original with the house. So the beadboard paneling is actually over them, and then the baseboards themselves are about three quarters of an inch or more down below the height of the flooring. Like they're on, they're on, they're on the subfloor basically. And it's just this short stretch here where the refrigerator is going to go and where the stove is going to go. This part here, I'm not too thrilled about. I'm going to have to cover this up and it's pretty much going to be the only place that <laughs> that's going to be visible, but I don't really have an alternative. I, I am not going to risk having to tear apart this entire wall just to get the baseboard off and undercutting for such a long uh, area like that, I, I just don't think makes sense. Uh, so we're just gonna put quarter round in, in, in these areas. The rest of the apartment, I took the baseboard off, so everything's gonna tuck in nice and neat. Uh, that stuff wasn't original. So I did better than the upstairs apartment. Still a few areas, right, where it's not perfect, but I can live with it. So it's really important when you first start out that you do a little measuring. Uh, one thing you don't want, or I don't like anyway, is to have a piece smaller than an inch uh, on any side of the room. And I think, I think they may actually suggest less or uh, more than that, but I don't sweat it too much. All right, so we're at about 140 there. This part's a bit tricky here. Uh, I need to know where I'm gonna start and know where I'm gonna hit once I'm on that wall, which looks like at about 30 inches. And the same thing here uh, on these cabinets, which is at about 28. And now what I can do is I can go back and I can divide all of those by uh, the, the, the width of my flooring, which is seven inches, uh, and just make sure I'm not gonna land in a, in a spot that's gonna have to have me put in a, a smaller piece because I, I don't want that. So if I end up in that situation, I can make adjustments to the first pieces right along this wall here. And what that'll do is it'll impact the rest of the install. So I can make adjustments to where the cut piece of flooring lands uh, as, as, I, as I go through the process. All right, so we're starting out with what will probably be the trickiest board of the day. Uh, one thing that I learned uh, a while ago is that with this stuff, you want to measure as little as possible. Wherever you can, you want to just shoot off the area that you're going to be but either butting up against or that you're going to be uh, going underneath. I opted to go for a single plank to start out. Uh, in the past, one thing I've done is tried to do uh, multiple planks and split them in the middle, kind of feeling like that makes it easier on either side. Uh, today, this, this just felt like the right thing to do. So one thing that I did realize uh, before I cut this was that I didn't want to clean cut across here because I don't want to have to put cord around here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna give this a little bit of a lip and then curve it so that once I do get in there, it should seat right in, it should leave the appropriate gap and allow me to get kind of a seamless finish in here. So if you're just cutting stuff in half, uh, razor knife, uh, scoring it and then just breaking it works fine. What I'm doing here uh, where I'm just cutting out a little bit, it's pretty rigid stuff. Uh, it takes a lot to break it. Uh, so I end up cutting that with a jigsaw uh, using a laminate blade. It seems to work pretty well. So this is what it looks like uh, before the install, and I know I'm going to have to come back and clean this up. And that's just the reality if you don't do this all day every day, right? You don't have the experience to get everything perfect the first time, and I would imagine, right? Even if you do it every day, you're still not getting everything right the first time. These pieces are always a little bit of a headache, but it kind of sets the stage for the entire rest of the room. Uh, so I always make sure that I, I spend the time here and I, I do my best to get it right. All right, I just did a quick test fit. Uh, the only real issue here is that I'm a bit proud inside here. And uh, I could probably take a little bit off this corner here because uh, of where I'm going to end up having that seat. Uh, good news is everything else looks pretty decent. I think that's going to slide under nicely. I just need to take some out of this corner here because underneath I don't have things cut back quite as much as, as I left a gap for. All right, so I ended up making an embarrassing number of cuts on this thing uh, before I realized that there was actually an issue underneath and I just needed to cut it back a little bit. Uh, so I was basically cutting out the wrong thing. So I don't want to lie to you about how many cuts I made. Uh, so I'm just not going to tell you. <laughs> um, but the good news is it's in. Uh, that was probably the hardest piece in this whole room. Now I just need to cut a piece in half, uh, get it butted up against this spot here. And then for the most part, it's just straight cuts for the rest of the room. All right, so to do this piece, I'm going to use a little trick the internet taught me. Uh, first, I am going to get it cut to the appropriate length. I'm 
just gonna take this and I'm gonna roughly line it up as best I can. Um, ideally, this is used when you go in the other direction so you have a piece to, to hang on to. Um, what it might actually do is, well, I messed up the trick the internet taught me. <laughs> it's gonna have to be good enough. So I've got this piece here. Uh, I've got the tongue uh, still there. I've got the groove uh, cut off on the top. And what I'm gonna do is essentially just square this up. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna run this along the wall here, like so. What that should do is give me an exact cut line. Now, in my mind, it works a little bit better if you're going the other way, because here I didn't really have anything to hang on to once I cut that board. Uh, so I may need to trim this up a little bit depending on how things go, but we're gonna start with this and see how it works. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna be doing here before we start laying stuff down is just taking these out of the boxes and sorting them as best we can. Uh, I would say if I have one gripe with this flooring, it is that there's only five patterns. And sometimes, depending on where you're at in the install, it can be really hard to not get repeated patterns. Uh, so you, I'm guessing most people wouldn't notice, but I find it really visually unappealing, and that's one of the things that I'm a, I'm a stickler about, like to the point where I've taken off multiple rows of flooring before because I had a, a pattern that repeated right next to itself. Thank you. So here I'm gonna to have to go under this cap. I know from experience this guy is not coming off easy uh, and is also gonna be a pain to cut. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did here uh, where I, when I undercut the, uh, the trim, I'm just gonna put a piece of flooring down. I'm gonna use that to shoot off of as I, as I cut through this. Oftentimes for me, this is the biggest pain. Uh, I end up having to move flooring around as I'm, as I'm laying it down. Haven't found a great solution for this yet, especially because I always end up wanting the flooring in the room that I'm in. What I usually end up doing is just bringing the flooring back in the box, setting it down, and then opening up enough for maybe like three or four rows. And then just shifting my piles of open flooring as I lay it down. So I think it's about seven boxes uh, stacked according to the patterns they have. Uh, what you can probably see is I've got about triple uh, that pattern when compared to this pattern uh, and probably double uh, here. So a lot more of a certain pattern uh, over seven boxes. So I gotta be real careful as I'm laying along the entire length here, especially how open this is gonna be. I have to make sure that I don't have repeated patterns too close to each other, otherwise it's gonna look a little funny. These are always a little tricky because I don't have a lot of room to angle them up. So sometimes it's a little bit of a pound in. That one worked out fine. Not too bad.
feel like my wall is as straight as I thought it was. All right, so here I've got the door going down to the basement and it's gonna be a little bit of a pain because the vinyl was previously kind of like lift up over it. I'm gonna undercut part of this piece here with the multi-tool and I'm gonna chisel down on my cut line to basically create a groove in this that I can seat the flooring into, uh, which is gonna give me a nice contiguous piece. And then I can put a piece of trim over it. So I gotta basically like cut through part of this, remove it, and I'll be able to lay the floor in there. So these, I used to try and cut these with a grinder, uh, or I would use, uh, worse, if I can't get them off, an oscillating multi-tool. Uh, when I can get them off, when they come off relatively easily, tin snips work great. All right, so all that's left now is this little spot right here, and this is probably gonna be the hardest of all uh, because I have to work backwards, which, Honestly, it's not so bad. It's a little trickier, but it should be okay. And this is where I had no real control over uh, how much of a piece I would have left when I got to the end. Uh, so we're gonna we're just gonna dive right in here. We're gonna hope for the best. Uh, hopefully, this will go quickly. All in all, I'm gonna say that went really well. Uh, I have done a bunch of flooring, so it's not super hard anymore. There's always a few spots that throw me just a little bit and you know, you gotta pivot and try and figure out what the best thing to do is. Uh, but like I said, things went well today. And this is where it all started, that first piece. Getting that piece in right meant that the entire rest of the floor just went super easy. Oh, and I, I probably haven't even shown you this yet. <laughs> there we go. Take a quick look around here and over in under here. So I find that flooring definitely transforms the space uh, it's it's getting even better in here. I think I think the last thing is this guy right here. We gotta gotta get a window in there. Once that's in and the the countertops are back, I, I took the countertops off. Or you can kind of see those there. But yeah, once that window's in and those countertops are back on, uh, this is gonna feel like a kitchen, right? Well, it's not gonna feel like a kitchen yet because there's no sink, there's no stove, there's no refrigerator. Stove, refrigerator, sink. Uh, I think probably another couple days and this kitchen will be in pretty good shape. Uh, that sounds optimistic. Actually, that sounds kind of optimistic to me as well. Uh, maybe a few more days than that, uh, but we're making some good progress. I think I've got about seven weeks left before this place has to be rented, so feeling good about the progress, but still a little nervous. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, as always, if you like this content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.